factor in how you want to yeah, I mean, uh, you see him making plays outside the pocket, extending plays, throwing the ball down the field. Um, definitely got to be aware of it, got to be ready for it. Um, that's what he does. He's big, he's strong. Got to be able to get him on the ground when you do wrap him up when he's on his way around, right? Because um, he does. He, he's able to duck, he's able to shrug, he's able to get guys off of him even when they're on him when he's able to escape and extend some of those plays. Bud Dupree getting his... Does he look different? I mean, the first time he maybe wasn't as mobile because of the ankle. I mean, can you tell his movements? Can yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think it was evident even in the rainstorm they played in the other day. Um, down the goal line, you see him out run the corner. Um, so he's he's aware of his ability and what he can do, and he's using it to his advantage um, in timely situations. Pre getting his first sack, it seems like he's starting to get a little more bounce. Uh, is that something that you noticed just in watching him in practice and games, et cetera? Yeah, I think uh, anytime you have success out there, it's going to lead to a little bit more juice, a little bit more confidence as we go. Um, hopefully it continues throughout the week here, and we'll see where he's at come Sunday. But hopefully that does lead to a little bit more confidence in himself. Your conversation with him, has that come out? Like, hey, man, you know, Coach, I, I feel like I'm, I'm You can sense it. You know, just being around him and talking to him, you, you can kind of sense there's a little bit more mojo. I think he's starting to feel a little bit better. Anytime you have success, regardless, everything's going to feel a little bit better when you're sacking the quarterback. Simmons says he thinks this rush has been more coordinated lately. What does that mean? Yeah, I think just understanding, like, you go back and look, we played a lot of mobile quarterbacks up to this point, right? Um, again, this week, you just got to understand how these guys are operating, where they're trying to escape to, making sure we're good there, making sure we can limit those escapes, but at the same time have answers to be able to counter back and, in essence, fit off of each other, right? I think it's it's got to be coordinated. You can't just go free reign all over the place. Um, I mean, we only got four rushers. They got five O linemen, right? So there's going to be a hole somewhere. So just making sure we're coordinated in that regard where we're not giving them those easy escape lanes. So they're able to generate the kind of pressure you did against Kansas City without blitzing and scheming it up. I mean, what does that allow you to do to have that ability? You know, does that change things for you? Yeah, I mean, I think anytime you got more guys in coverage, the coverage is going to be better, right? So, I mean, if you're able to send four and get some pressure, you got more guys back there able to play different coverages, do some different things. It gives you a little bit more uh, flexibility of what you're able to do when you're only bringing four from a coverage standpoint. Um, so it benefits. It goes hand in hand, just like some of the players have talked about. The rush and the coverage go hand in hand. Like we played a lot of zone, they were getting home, right? And then on third down, we were in a lot of man situations and we were getting home. And part of that's because we were in tight coverage on third down, despite whoever they had out there. So it goes hand in hand. Talked a lot about the pass rush with you and asked a lot about that the last couple of years. How encouraging is it to see an increase in production there? Yeah, man, it's good. It's great to see. I think uh, Nico's been a great addition for us. Um, I think his regardless of all his production and all his hits and everything else, I think he's making everybody else better too, right? I think it shows up on some of Harold's stuff. So having those four guys, I mean, they're all they're all good rushers. They're working well together, right, off of each other. They're unselfish. Um, they kind of go into the game plan. They execute. They don't really care who gets it. You see them excited for each other. When somebody's able to get a sack, or we're able to affect the quarterback. I'm Brady and Peyton Manning. We're having a conversation Monday night. Where they're talking about how much they prefer to go against man coverage. A lot lesser quarterbacks seem to always talk that way too. Does that ever influence how you approach it, that you know the quarterback would rather see man, or do you figure our best man is still better than what he'd prefer? No doubt. I think I think that's uh it's a valid point. I think any time they know it's man coverage, they can kind of just find the open guy, right? They're not having to really dissect what's going on. They can just find the matchup and try to go to that open guy where if you're mixing some zone, doing some different things, they got to be able to sort it out post snap and it might not be as clear to them early on in the down. Um, but at the same time, it, I think it relates to your matchups too, right? How you feel about your matchups in the back end too. Are you able to match up? Are you able to stay on these guys to allow the rush to get home? Um, Again, it kind of goes back to what I was talking about correlation-wise, too. But understanding who the quarterback is, what he's comfortable with, what's going to challenge him in ways that you can affect him that are more than just about the rush. Shane, you had mentioned uh, Danico kind of making uh, everyone else's lives easier. You mentioned, you know, with some of that stuff Harold has been able to do. What exactly is Danico doing or what, it, you know, his, his skill set that kind of frees up, uh, you know, opportunities for yeah, everyone else? Yeah, I think run? he's a big, long body in there who's able to get some push in the middle of the pocket, right? Like you're not seeing quarterbacks being able to step up a lot. A lot of those sacks are happening pretty deep, right? So guys aren't aren't really able to step up. Um, 
which kind of bodes well for us. And then he's he's athletic for a big dude. He's able, he's quick. He's able to get on edges. Um, he's got some quick twitch to him where he's able to work side to side and find ways off of blockers late in the down to get to the quarterback. Do you think that was your best defense? Do you think that was the defense's best performance on Sunday since you've been the coordinator? And how much can you point to that game and say this is how good we can, can be if we – Execute. Yeah, the guys played hard, man. They, they. I thought all eleven guys were flying around making plays. They were coordinated. I thought we played great team defense, um, and we came up with some timely stops when we got them off schedule. Right, we were able to get off the field on third down, and we were able to get another stop in the red zone. A few stops in the red zone. Um, so I think really. As a group, as a unit, I thought all the guys really executed and played really well together, and the effort, the effort stands out. Kids that you have with Archery and, and, and Dupree, Simmons, Landry, is that something you guys envisioned when you went out and, and acquired Dupree and Archery, or is that something just kind of... Yeah, I think any time you, you can get really good rushers on the field on third down or two-minute situations, you're going to try to do it, and I think that's part of it. Um, John goes through it. Braves goes through it. We all talk kind of about what we want to be and where we want this thing to go, right? That always plays into it. But anytime you get f four really good players who, who can rush the passer, it's going to benefit you. And then some of those extra wide alignments with Landry, where it's like, to joke when we make a term, he's like at an 11 technique, yeah. you know, all the way out there. I mean, some of that's based on you start rushing better, teams start chipping you, right? So they put those guys in those great positions, right? So it's more or less him getting in a spot he feels comfortable where he can rush from based on that split. Right, if they're going to chip them out there, it's depending on the split. It's better to be out there than it is to potentially be inside and getting railed down and collapsed and on the edge. As a, as a defense coordinator, what makes a, a a particularly good play action hard to defend? Yeah, I think uh, if they're able to run the ball, right? Like that's obviously it's going to buy you. It's going to try. You're trying to add numbers constantly in the run game. So if they're able to run the ball and you're trying to get those safeties. Down, like that's a big part of it. Linebackers, um, and then I think the O line. The O line is a big, big factor in it, right? Just are they truly selling the run? Do you see them pop up? Like, is there similarities in how they're coming off the ball when it's run and play action? That's what we talk about with our linebackers, with our DBs, being able to recognize the difference in some of that stuff. Um, but again, I think if they're running the ball, they're probably going to find some success in play action. How much do you appreciate a guy like Kevin Byard? Uh, considering just the leadership qualities, but also just what he's been able to do this season coming off of maybe an uh, upsetting year last year? Yeah, uh, he's invaluable to us as a defense. Um, his leadership, his communication, um, I mean, you guys know he runs the show for us. Like, he does. He gets everybody in the right spot. He communicates well. He makes sure everybody's on the same page. Um, and. We expect it from him. We expect him to make those plays. He expects it from himself, just the same, probably even more than we do, right? But that's the expectation level for him, to be in the right spot, to be able to use his instincts, use his ball skills, and to come up with those types of game-changing plays for us. Greg Maven had some experience with you guys. I wonder still how difficult is it to come in you know, Wednesday or, or whatever. A few days later, you're starting against the Chiefs. No, no it, it ain't easy. You know, um, I give him a lot of credit for coming in here, um, preparing to play in that game, understanding the game plan. I mean, he's got familiarity with what we've done, but he hasn't been here a long time, and he's learned a completely different defense since, right? So being able to come back, there's probably some recall that helped him. Um, but he came in ready to go, right? And he took the extra time. He met with Midge, he met with Book, did all those things that he had to do to be ready to go. Um, and can't say enough about that, coming in ready to go. He have maybe some skill sets that, that uh, made him a better choice than like a, a Breon or, or, you know, I guess even Chris Jones. Yeah, I think as, as the week went, we were just kind of evaluating where those guys were at as things played out, and we made a decision to go with him. I did, man. I appreciate Campbell sending me the stuff, man, the spicy uh, chicken and the... Uh, What's, what's the other one that I love? The uh, clam chowder is really good, right? A beer guard's nice. It's, it's unique. I've never seen it before, something like that, but it's, it covers you up now. So we'll see. We'll see how long this lasts. I might have to shave before No Shave November. So we'll figure it out. My beer gets a lot of love.